Mm. Um, C. You know, it's uh, maybe generous. That's but the lowest grade Mel gave anybody. Yeah. There were, I think, four teams that got C's, mm -hmm. but that was the lowest grade. So what yeah. do you ask me, Molly? So what my grade how is? would you grade your Cowboys? Mm -hmm. Molly, Stephen A., I cannot go any lower than a B plus. And I go B plus only because of how I think the quarterback situation in the draft was mishandled. Starting with Jerry speaking openly about his regrets about not overpaying to go up to take a Paxton Lynch, who suddenly turned into, I, 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 I don't know, like, like Joe Montana. I don't, I don't get it. What, where did it come from? All of a sudden, the bandwagon rolled in the last 48 hours for Paxton Lynch, and he was suddenly the best quarterback in the draft, or that's the way everybody spoke about him, including Jerry Jones. I don't get it. I told you Cardale Jones was my guy. Mm -hmm. And they had a shot at him sitting right there in the fourth round, and they took Dak, Pre Dak Prescott. I've raved about Dak in years past on this show. He is a very good college quarterback. Cardale has a chance to be a very good pro quarterback, and he went four spots later to Buffalo. So I don't like that. But let's go back to the top, and let's go back to our man Mel Kuyper. Nothing but respect, but Mel has been on record. You do not take running backs this high. Obviously, with the fourth pick in the draft, my Cowboys took Ezekiel Elliott. Mel would argue that there were four or five other running backs in this draft who could have similar impact behind the Cowboy offensive line. In fact, Mel raves about Dallas's sixth-round pick, Darius Jackson out of Eastern Michigan, who, who goes 221 pounds and ran a 4-3-40. Okay, fine. Ezekiel Elliott can have Emmett Smith kind of impact behind the Cowboy line. So I told you on Friday, I'm going A-plus just on that pick alone. I'm good with that. Try to keep the defense off the field because I'm not, I have no illusions about the defense. It's pretty sorry right now. And they didn't do a whole lot to fix it except for the fourth-round pick. You know I know the University of Oklahoma watched every snap of every game once again this year. Mm -hmm. Charles Tapper will flash. I always talk about when I'm watching on TV, he will flash twice a game every game where I'll sit back and say, wow. I don't see it every play, I don't see it every series, but he will flash as a pass rusher. Former basketball player out of Baltimore, 6'3", 271, ran a 4'640", which is pretty, he is, he's an athlete now. I think they have something in him. They might have something in Rico Gathers, their seventh round pick, who was a very good basketball player at Baylor, who averaged 11 rebounds, I'm sorry, 11 points and nine rebounds, two-time Louisiana State Player of the Year. One of the top, you know, a, a top high school, five-star high school recruit. Okay, I, I like it as a tight end prospect, a project prospect. So to me, I'm looking at this draft as I, I'm pretty happy with it. I'll go B plus with it, but I wish it was Cardell Jones instead of Dak Prescott. Well, listen, I don't disagree with you. Um, I think that when you look at Ezekiel Elliott running behind that massive offensive line, uh, and considering the fact that he's a three-down back as opposed to Alfred Morris or or Darren McFadden, I definitely think you got a point with Tony Romo coming back healthy. With um, excuse me, with um. Des Bryant, Des Bryant mm -hmm. coming back healthy. Yep. Of course, you got to look at it from that perspective. And you think about whether it's Rico Gathers and, you know, his athleticism and what he brings to the table or anybody else. Dallas Cowboys are expected to have a big-time offense. And when you consider the fact that they put pieces around Tony Romo to essentially protect him, whether it's another option to throw the ball to or it's a running back to hand the ball off to so he isn't getting hit too much, that's definitely an upgrade. So by virtue of that alone, I believe you give the Dallas a B, Dallas Cowboys a B, potentially a B plus. Wow. Where, 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 where I would tell you that the grade dissipates to some degree mm -hmm. is because you cannot have such a suspect defense and show it no priority whatsoever. I love the fact that Jalen Smith's going to be ended up there, but he's anticipated that he may not play next year. So it's a future pick, and we understand that. And down the line, it could be something that works for them. But you... Skip Bayless, mm -hmm. have to make up your mind because you have repeatedly said to me, when we're talking about the National Football League, it's the win now league. Yep. It's about getting it done now. There is no tomorrow. Mm -hmm. There is no tomorrow. Well, it seems to me that when it comes to the defensive side of the ball, all the Dallas Cowboys are talking about is tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Today doesn't necessarily matter. And so that's an additional game year, additional minimal of 16 games, if not more, assuming he's healthy enough to get through them, that you have Tony Romo out there. And so when you look at it from that perspective, and all you've done essentially, uh, you know, from the quarterback spot, you got Dak Prescott 
uh, and that's mm -hmm. it because you missed out on Paxton Lynch. You mm -hmm. passed up on Cardale Jones, okay? Yep. You didn't get Connor Cook either mm -hmm. out of Michigan State. You look at all of those different things. To me, yes, your offense is still bona fide, but that's assuming you have Tony Romo while you've done nothing mm -hmm. with the defense. And I believe the fact that you've had that mentality lowers your grade to a B. Then we also get into take into account the Washington Redskins. I mean, when you think about the Redskins and that and that safety that that, that Suwa kid uh, that they drafted, like 226 pounds mm -hmm. safety, a big safety, USC. doesn't yeah. mind hitting. Mm -hmm. Okay, you've got him going on. He, he's the one that I brought up on the show a month ago. Right. We talked about. I don't care about concussions. That's right. Part of the deal. Yeah. Remember? Go yeah. ahead. Yes. And then you've yeah. got this kid Dotson out of TCU. He's and my you know favorite what, receiver and in the, the draft. He's the best receiver in the draft. Yeah. And so when you look at it from that perspective, now the team that won the division, who is a playoff team, yeah. just buffered themselves offensively while addressing defensive needs. So they understood that there are two sides of the ball that you need to address even more so than the Dallas Cowboys. And the New York Giants, obviously, in free agency, they spent hundreds of millions of dollars mm -hmm. trying to improve their defense. Then they drafted Eli Apple. I'm not sold on the 10, but I like Eli. I think he's going to be a really good player, and he's got a lot of promise. Mm -hmm. I just would have taken Tunsil. And that they explained been me. how that happened. I understand yeah. that, I, but I would have taken Tunsil. Mm -hmm. So for me, but I'm looking at the Giants. They didn't go in a, in a backward direction. The Redskins improved, okay? The Eagles, I'm suspect on. I'm just looking at within this division. I'm looking at the Dallas Cowboys high-powered offense, and I'm saying to myself, all right, but a team could really exploit you defensively, and that could create some okay. problems. Okay, now I didn't bring up, and I, was, I, I had a plan not to bring him up. Sure. Jalen Smith. Mm -hmm. We're talking about a top five pick. If he yes. hadn't wrecked his knee. No question. And it's so wrecked that no he question. probably can't play this coming year. As an outside linebacker, I will bet you he will get healthy, and I will bet you he will be a perennial Pro Bowl linebacker. Oh, he's big time. Hey, he's big time. Every time I turn on Notre Dame, he's jumping off the screen every play. I'm like, wow, that guy's got it. He's got it all. He's big time. Okay? That is football, so, man. When all right. What's that knee? Okay, but I, I'm going to bet in this day and age you can get that knee pretty right, 90% right. And if you do perennial Pro Bowl linebacker, I just can't argue him for next year. So I, he's TBD in this draft to be determined because mm -hmm. I don't know what to do with him. I don't know what to make of him. I can't fault them for taking him because it's such value in the second round right. you get a top five player in the second round the the problem is the caveat is he won't help you next year he will not help tony romo next year mm -hmm. by improving the defense you need to look i got it no, no. okay i got All you right. okay now back to jerry jones mm -hmm. i open with this i'm going to close with this got it i don't know why he feels compelled to spill his guts publicly unless it's to to remind people, I wanted Paxton Lynch so that when Paxton Lynch gets good in Denver, he can just say, I, I told you so. I, I told you so. Well, well what, oh, wow, what wow. good does that do, Dak well, Prescott? Let me now. tell you what, 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 let me tell yeah. what good it did. Right. Yeah. It was a headline mm -hmm. because that's what your owner's addicted to. Yeah. Well, he, a headline. Well, that's Zeke what that was him. about. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. I'm talking about him bringing up the Paxton Lynch scenario. Mm -hmm. And what did Jerry Jones say? Everything that, every every great Everything thing that's happened to me in my life, for. I overpaid for. I've gambled. It's when I played conservative yep. and I was a bit timid, I'm paraphrasing here, that I didn't get it done. So he's telling you, he's giving you some insight into it, but more importantly than that, he's giving you a reason to talk about his franchise, which is his primary objective, mm -hmm. which is why the Dallas Cowboys usually lose, mm -hmm. because winning is not their priority. Mm -hmm. Gaining headlines are, and just yet again, it was proven. Yeah, but haven't you in your life ever gotten a bargain that benefited you greatly? Yes. See, he's saying that I never, like, bargains were always usually busts for me. When I, when I got something on the cheap, it's back to what my mom always told me, you get what you pay for, you know, yeah. right? Okay, so I, I, I disagree. I think every once in a while you can make a good deal on something. Mm -hmm. Well, Jalen Smith, they didn't pay much for Jalen. They spent a second-round pick. What if he turns into a perennial Pro Bowler? Then I say, and that was you risky. didn't overpay. Yeah. You know, but the one thing I want to say this as well. Again, we're talking about the draft per se, but in, in all honesty, all joking aside, Dallas's defense, as much as it struggled, it was primarily due to their offense last year. Dallas defense had some good moments, and they and they they looked relatively respectable. They were 16th overall. They, they were, were ranked. They were ranked five against the pass. So when you look at it from that perspective, now you're getting Orlando Scandrick back because you lost him last year. Yep. Okay. And and you know they gotta do they have to deal with the defensive line and we all know this. But in the end, if your offense can give you something, 
You'd like to believe this defense will be there, but again, it's Dallas. And when you see some of the mistakes that they made at pivotal junctures last year, I'm not sure you get away with ignoring your defense as much as they did. Yep. Only in Dallas could Jerry Jones pull off a draft in which we just discussed every round of the draft on this show. Mm -hmm. We went down to the seventh round pick, a basketball player from Baylor. That's that's Dallas. Headlines. That's, that's the Dallas wild boys, sure. right? But I get what you're saying. Why is he going to bring that up for that kid? Yeah. Headlines. But covering yeah. his tracks. Okay, Headlines. so Washington got an A minus. Cowboys C, Eagles C, Giants B plus. Before we go to break, Sterling Shepard is really good. Hey, he is really, really. I give you that one. Yep. Like good. I, I Redeem thought. Redeem themselves you, a little. But you did take Odell Manhattan with yeah. another pick, yeah. right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Wasn't that that kid's yeah. name, Odell that, Manhattan? That was good. No, Sterling Shepard will push. He, he'll make the real Odell Beckham. Wonder if he's really the best receiver on that team. That's how good this kid is. Wow. I like it. All right, we move on. So is uh, Floyd May Mayweather pulling a little Brett Favre right now? We all heard Mayweather say he was retiring after his last fight in September, but has he changed his tune? We'll tell you what he's saying now about a possible future fight. That's after the break.